<clears throat> okay, let's see here. All right, let's, I'm going to get you guys uh, promoted here, so hang on just one second. Hey, Andre, I'm going to um, promote you to co-host, and if you wouldn't mind help me with um, the promotions, that'd be great. I'm going to get uh, Carrie Ann going here, so hang on just one second. Hey, Gary, I heard, I heard you say, Andre, I'm going to, and then I was in a transition of coming in, so I didn't hear you. Oh, I was going to say, Andre, I've got a check for a million dollars for it for you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll be right over. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind help with the promotion tonight and um check in the chat box uh, rob lane i'm going to ask you the same thing rob if you wouldn't mind helping andre out he'll promote okay. people you can help with the chat box because gina's right. so um welcome aboard guys carrie ann and, and please please forgive me what's your your first name jody jody, jody how, can, how can i forget that i got a jody on the team and and uh, we had a jody as employee too so Okay, sorry about that. Sometimes my 40-year-old memories works pretty good and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> so so guys, we gotta we generally give everybody a few minutes to log in and and um if anybody has questions to to ask before we get started, that will be just be a good time to do that. Um but in any case, uh this is obviously live and it's uh interactive. So what I'll do, guys, is um Andre and Rob will help me out. We'll man the, the chat box for Carrie and Jody. And Carrie, do you prefer that they kind of um, like hold, you know, they can type in their questions, but we'll hold them for you to when we see a natural pause? Or do you like to answer them as you go along? Or how do you generally like to do things? Yeah, we can we can answer them as we go along. I think that's probably because we're going to continue to elevate um, and build off of it. So we can okay. pause and ask for, for some questions. Make okay. sure everybody's feeling good. This is something yeah. new. We're excited to share with everybody. Well, we got a great group tonight. Um, uh, the eight, a lot of the agents are on our team, the Global Investor Agent Team, and we're now. Uh, I just found out the other day we're actually in thirty six states now. <laughs> so, oh, wow! I know, pretty awesome. I had, I didn't, I thought we were still like twenty five or something. And we also have some guests on. I see Dean Lawrence is on. Dean, good to see you, buddy. Um, I think I saw. Uh, let's see, Greg Covington. Greg, if you're on, it's good to see you too, buddy. Um, and from really, you know, Greg's from Tidewater, Virginia. Dean's from College College Park, Pennsylvania. And the agents, of course, are from, from pretty much all over. Um, so I've been been talking about this for all over. We're so excited. I mean, I can't, it's, it's like, it's like I was a kid waiting for Christmas to come, you know? <laughs> So, because we because we met, that was back in I think like November, perhaps October, November, when we did the uh, podcast interview. Possibly, time has been flying for sure. Yep. It so, is. Um, in any case, guys, I'm going to let uh, Carrie and Jody describe uh, this loan program, but it's it's very unique. I've never heard of it before, and as soon as they said it, I'm like, holy smokes, this is this is going to be a game changer um, in the marketplace. So, in any case, it is seven o. Three. So let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and introduce you, um, guys. This is Carrie Ann and Jody, and uh, from Na you're Nashville, right? Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, and and I I'm trying to remember everything. I should have reviewed everything before this, but did you, didn't didn't you tell me before you actually were you were singing before? Yeah, it's funny. Both both Jody and I uh, are yeah. ex uh, singers um, and moved to Nashville to pursue and got into the mortgage business. And we're really blessed. Music brought us here. Um, we're we're making a difference um, through. Uh, we should just start to carry a tune with how we sell this now. <laughs> 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 but yeah, 
We're blessed. I'm originally from New the New England area, and then Jody's from the other side of the United States, uh, Washington, mm -hmm. right? Seattle. Seattle. So uh, we bring, um, and we've met up here in, in, in Nashville. And so I've been in the mortgage business now for a little over 20 years. Um, Jody and I, she's been actually selling a very similar product uh, for 12 plus years. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> we joined forces a few years ago. Uh, to really make a difference here in the marketplace um, and continue to to help serve um, our real estate community. And then we open the doors in multiple different states now. So we're able to serve even more um, of, of the real estate community across the United States um, as we continue to help and get the word out with this particular program. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, if you'd like, we can go against short. I, I made you a co-host, so you're, you're welcome to share your screen. If you have anything, like, you know, PowerPoint, anything like that, yeah, um, you'll be able to do that. And uh, I'll ask everybody if you could, if you're not actively speaking, to go ahead and mute yourself and use the chat box. And we, we can unmute you. We, we do this regularly, Carrie. We'll just sometimes un let them unmute themselves and then we can be live and vocal too, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm open to that. I want this to be as interactive as, as possible. You know, we're going to talk about something today that's really new, but technically it hasn't been um, it's not new to the marketplace. Um, uh, we've got Canada. This is very familiar there. Um, Europe's been uh, utilizing this product for, for many years. Um, also in Australia. Um, and I'll share with you that back in, I think it was 2001, uh, the owner of CMG Financial was at a banking conference in Australia. Um, and I think after that conference, they he went to get a beer. And I think the story goes, they flipped over the uh, Foster's Coaster and one of the Australian bankers was writing out the concept of what this uh, loan is all about. And it's a focus on principal before interest. Um, and all of a sudden the light bulbs went off uh, with the uh, with our owner. Um, and he said, I am bringing this to the United States. I think we can make a huge difference um, and we can help families save hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and by 2005, we launched what is known today called the all-in-one home loan. Um, and I will share with you that this is the only loan that's never defaulted or had one delinquency since its creation in 2005. And that is all wow. through the COVID years um, as well. So this product is really making a difference for a lot of families, whether they're looking to use it to purchase a primary home, to purchase a second home and or an investment home. And right now we're finding a lot of folks that are real estate agents as they navigate through uh, today's marketplace. They're refinancing their already very low interest rate uh, mortgage into the all-in-one home loan. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, why that makes sense. You know, people that had a 2875 are getting rid of that uh, for a higher interest, but looking at this as a platform to do so much more for them. Um, and it's not about interest rate, it's about effective rate. And we'll talk about that here um, in a little bit as well. Uh, so we're excited to, to be with you here today. And again, if you have some questions, please don't hesitate to to pause and and or pause me and and we'll ask uh jody is one of the the top professionals on my team she sells this every day um and she does an amazing job and serves a lot of the self-employed here in middle tennessee and and different states as well this is a great product for those folks and maybe you're sitting there saying this it resonates with you um that you're a busy a business owner, you've got a lot of money that just sits idle in your checking account uh, because deposits come in um, and they're just sitting there and you haven't had an opportunity to move them left or move them right. And they're not making enough money to make it make any sense. And so for those folks that have more income than expenses with that idle uh, cash just sitting in your bank account, this is a huge opportunity to make a difference uh, for your financial uh, future for sure. So we'll share a few slides here. Um, so how it works. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're changing, we're shifting your mind, mindset um, on a regular mortgage. A regular mortgage is just that. It's an amortized loan. It's usually for a full 30 years. We've been talking about a 30-year fix since the Great Depression. Um, that's just what we know, right? And a lot of people, we don't like change. I'm not one who enjoys change. I'll just stick with what I know for as long. Um, if And why, why change it if it's not broken? We're we're changing the mind shift to adding banking 
to our mortgage. Um, and so that's a whole different world here. And if you think about your bank account, kind of think back when you opened it. I think when I landed here 22 years ago, First Tennessee Bank sounded like a bank that I should use because it's in Tennessee and I've had the same checking account for 22 years. And really that checking account is really just a, a vessel for money to come in and money to go out, right? That just helps me move money around. It doesn't really make me an extra dollar or two. Um, it's just an opportunity to shift money. So if you think about, we're adding a checking account to your mortgage financing, okay? That is the new concept that we're looking at. And again, we're focusing on principal before interest. For those that are not familiar, um, if, if you've looked at an amortization chart, uh, even the lowest interest rate, 2.875, you still pay quite a bit of interest for the first 10 years. I think it's 50% of the interest for that 30-year loan you're paying within the first 10 years, right? That's crazy if you think about it. And how long are you and I living in a home? I asked that question to a bunch of real estate agents the other day. What's the average time frame one lives in a home? I heard five, eight, 13, right? So if you think about, we're not even in that home longer than the amount of interest that we're paying. It, it's crazy. So we're changing our mindset. We're adding um, our mortgage with a checking account. So this is a whole different world. And this particular loan is trademarked just to CMG Financial too. So just so you guys uh, know that. The okay. checking account that we're going to give you is going to have all the perks and all the bells and whistles like you and I have possibly now, um, if you know how to use them. I think I have all those things, but I don't know how to use half of them. But you get your 24 access to your money. You get a debit card that you can swipe at any time to have access to your funds. You have your personal checking online and also mobile banking. So all the perks that come with a regular checking account you're given uh, with this particular loan as well. It also is uh, insured and um, all, all the things that come with regular banking, you've, you've got that. So it's not a bank with Carrie Ann. It's not a bank with CMG. It is a true bank and fully insured loan with, with a, um, excuse me, it's a checking account with a bank. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit more about um, how this works. So you may be familiar with something called a sweep account. Basically, a sweep account um, is where all when your deposits go into that particular checking account, and that's not an interest bearing checking account. It's just a place where it holds your money for a hot minute. At midnight, that money sweeps over and pays down your principal on your loan every night at midnight. And so this loan is going to be considered a 30 year non-traditional home equity line of credit. You may be familiar with the term equity line of credit, which is on more of the traditional side. A traditional side is where you pay interest on a 30 day uh, period of time. This non-traditional allows you to pay a daily interest calculation. So as the money sweeps over, let's say on the second, um, and I, I don't know if it goes into this in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, if it sweeps over on the second, but then you have a car payment on the third, your interest amount on the second is going to be a little less than on the third. And every day it's going to give you the daily calculation of what you're going to pay on true interest. And so if you think about um, mm. this is how this works right here. So it's going to continue to add all your interest amounts for that particular amount. And on the 21st of the month, you're going to have your interest that you have due swept over automatically. And this is great for those busy folks like um, that are familiar. I'm one of those moms and business owners that uh, focus on everybody else but myself. And I'm just running ragged to get my bills paid uh, timely. This is an automatic sweep, right? So it's perfect for those folks that are self-employed and on the run. But again, you're only paying your daily interest calculation. So those that have extra money that are sitting in their checking account, it allows the opportunity for their principal on that particular loan to be lessened um, each and every month um, and, and can help you, again, to save as much money on your interest uh, calculation. All right. And again, it continues and continues and continues every single month. And that's how that works. Um, and I apologize. Some of these are we're just going to click through really fast. That's they, okay. get these fancy, they get these fancy uh, mm -hmm. um, PowerPoints here that are a little over my head. So we're going to skip through them. OK, we so got, you got plenty of time. These classes normally go like seven hours. I hope that's OK. You know. Oh, I love it. I, I love it. <laughs> Keep funny. Um, I had my my coffee there mid midday. So we're in good shape. OK, so if I had a drawing board, I would kind of share. And I don't know if you can see me, but basically. Um, 
let's talk in easy terms. Let's say my balance on my loan is $100,000, right? And I was able to make $5,000 um, on the second of the month, let's just say. And so that came through from maybe a rent check, from an investment, maybe that came from fixed income, maybe that came from a commission check, maybe that came from my husband or my wife's income, all the things. Uh, it does not matter where it comes, but it is a true deposit that has uh, that you receive. Um, and so that money comes in, it's $5,000. It drops my principal balance on my mortgage, uh, the $5,000. So now my $100,000 is now $95,000, okay? And so I'm only paying interest on $95,000. Now, let's say that I actually don't have a car payment um, and I possibly am one of those smart gals that listen to somebody that says you need to use a credit card that you can put everything on and get all the points um, and win the big prize. I swear, I feel like I'm winning a prize versus spending all the money. But I put all my charges on one credit card and that credit card is not due until 10 days later, let's just say. And that credit card actually is um, $6,000, right? And so now I need to pay uh, my credit card payment. And so I'm able to pay that on this particular loan, okay? So now my balance goes up. And so that particular day, um, after the so many days of the low interest, I now have a higher interest payment. And then the two days later, another check comes in, whether that's fixed income or a uh, real estate check or rent payment, et cetera that comes in and now my principal drops again. And you continue to play that balance um, in that game um, over the next so many months and years. And as you start to build that momentum, you're gonna notice that you are lowering your principal organically and not realizing uh, that all of a sudden after seven to nine years, I think that's the average that your home is paid off uh, with no lifestyle changes because I'm still able to go get my Starbucks. I'm still able to bring my daughter here or have her go to that school or drive that car, all the things, my lifestyle has not changed. I just happen to be the perfect candidate for this particular loan because I have extra money that sits in my checking account, just not doing anything. And now what you're going to do is allow it to be used to favor you um, and save you as much money on your interest. Now, you may be somebody saying, you know what? I am not one that uh, cares that my home is paid off. I'm a smarter gal or guy, and I know that I need to leverage my money for future gains, right? And I'm right there with you. And so you may be somebody that looks at this as, as an opportunity as you build momentum that you know, do not need to get a secondary financing loan or a commercial loan or this or that, you're able to utilize the equity that you have gained over the so many years to be able to purchase more real estate and continue to build and gain wealth um, through this particular program. You're able to have this loan six times, which is a huge win for you. Again, like we shared, you can have this on a primary, second, or an investment property. And the down payment requirement on an investment property is only 25% down, which is very similar to all the other investment loans that are out there, which is a huge win. Now, this shows you that this is the 30-year line of credit, which means that you have access to your equity at all times. After 10 years, that line adjust to make sure that the home is truly paid off in a th full 30 year uh, window. So you'll see that the line shifts just a little bit uh, to, as, as you reach the 10 year mark to the 30 year mark, just to make sure that you do have it paid off. Uh, but you do still have access to the equity up for the full 30 years, which is the only type of equity line that is available out there, uh, which, is a, which is a huge win for, for you guys. If you have any questions as we are navigating through this, um, uh, let me let me know for sure. There's um, one, Carrie Ann, right now. Yeah. Uh, Kathy wants to know what states is this loan product available in currently? All states, ma'am. We could do we can serve um, all all fifty states. It may not be New York. Maybe we. I think New York is a unique property in itself, um, excuse me, it's state in itself, but I, all other states um, are available. Yes, uh-huh, absolutely. So if you'd like to share um, a little bit of the long-term results with them and how they can read this. Yeah, chart here. so what you guys are kind of seeing here is the comparison between a traditional mortgage and um, a all-in-one. So what we're seeing here is based on this scenario, and I don't 
I don't have the um, all the figures in here, but we will run a scenario so you can kind of see what this actually looks like. Um, but this is basically showing you the comparison on based on a six hundred forty thousand dollar loan. If you'd be paying it, and I don't know even what the rate is, but this is just one scenario where you're going to be paying seven hundred forty one thousand dollars in compounding interest on a traditional mortgage over the next 30 years, whereas with the all-in-one over the next 15 years, because that's how long this person would take to pay off their mortgage, they're actually going to only pay 468000 Huge win, so huge, saving. huge savings there, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and that's really what we're looking at is um, if, you, if you and I have promoted so many years to look at a 30-year fix and take advantage of those low interest rates, um, but how much money are you and I really paying in total interest cost, right? And so that's where it takes a wise man and woman to shift our mind uh, to be able to see that this is a, a, a more of a win for us um, in the long run. Uh, there's a reason why so many people in Canada and Australia and Western Europe are utilizing this product. Um, there's not secondary markets out there. We here in the United States have secondary markets and we have seen what those have done for us over um, over the years, you know, there's talks. A lot of folks are like, "Oh, I wish I could get a 40 year to help more families." Are we really helping more families? Uh, you know, is is the question if you know about uh, total amortization and interest costs there. So uh, this is definitely one that's a huge win. We're going to share with you right now a calculator that uh, we can put some scenarios in and um, kind of look at um, maybe yours or mine or whoever's would see if it would make a sense uh, to do. Um, recently, we can share kind of a story you've helped um, a client. And as she kind of sets this up, let me share you with the qualifications too. What I love about this program is uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which you're familiar with, share that one who has lots of income, excuse me, one who has lots of assets should be over a certain age. And those guidelines have never changed, right? So for me to be able to utilize income off of the assets that you and I have sitting in a uh, savings, brokerage account, et cetera, for income purposes, you and I have to be over a certain age. There are many people that are now out of a younger age that are making non-traditional income uh, that you and I cannot use, but they have lots and lots of assets. And what I love about this program is that it's not... Um, age driven. It supports the athlete. It supports the musician. It supports the the YouTube influencer. It supports the TikTok, whatever. I don't even know how to understand all that yet, but the, a lot of people are making money and it's just not income that we can source. And so we're able to utilize something called an asset depletion um, calculation, which means that I take all of their assets and I um, divide that by 120 months, and I'm able to use that as another income source for your clients. And Jody has a great, great story to share. Um, actually, it was a real estate agent yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, client came in and had 60% to put down mm -hmm. and thought with a large down payment, there would be no issue with getting approved for a regular type of loan, right? There, there, there shouldn't be. Uh, putting 60% down. And she ran up against this roadblock and that roadblock. And Jody, being so wise, um, thought, hey, why don't I lessen your down payment, only put 20% down, because that's the only um, the minimum down for a primary home. And she utilized that extra 40%, divided it by 120 months, um, and was able to allow her to qualify for a loan utilizing the all-in-one. Um, and that was a huge win. And that uh, agent is going to then take the funds after closing, and Jody will share with you how she's doing that to do a principal reduction after closing. So her payment is still what she wants it to be. Mm -hmm. She still has access of all that equity because she only put 20% down for future opportunities later um, uh, within her, uh, the life of her loan. So that was a huge win. So there's lots of opportunity uh, for those folks that are, are just a little non traditional, uh, for the folks like you and I that know how much uh, wealth can be gained through real estate if we only had access to our equity and we weren't spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on interest, uh, this would be the loan for you. There's a reason why many of us here at CMG Financial um, have this particular program. Ben Stein, which is a well-known economist and actor, has this particular uh, loan program. There's a lot of people out there that have it. 
the ones that are wise and know how to save um, and use it as a platform. So here's the calculator that she's gonna uh, walk us through. So we're gonna compare uh, a traditional mortgage 30 year fix to the all-in-one. Uh, we wanna see what the um, what the strategy looks like. So we can kind of educate you guys on, on th that because it, it's pretty, it kind of is what drives this whole thing, to be honest. So what Karen was referring to earlier about this being your, becoming your checking account. Um, and then I want, and then we'll also show the comparison of the effective APR, because that's really all that is, is just what your true cost is you're paying on that money in a percentage form. And we know that number can change by the amount of extra principal payments you make, et cetera. So this is really going to show you the difference between the two and why we love this product so much. And most importantly, why we kind of don't really care too much about the interest rate overall. Um, so, and I'm going to change this to, uh, 3.75% because I think a lot of folks were kind of took advantage of the market over the last few years and are probably sitting in the threes um, on their primary mortgage. So what this is doing is it's saying, okay, our estimated home values have gone through the roof and my house is now worth 800,000. I only owe about 350. Um, my interest rate on that is about 3.75. We can't see the calculator. Hey, yeah. Oh, you can't see this? Yeah. No. no. You don't see the last all in one slide. Okay. Okay. Please. Got a couple of questions in the chat box too. You want Good. us to ask them sure. now, or? Yeah, that's perfect. While we work this out. Hey, you, Sam. You, you, Carrie, what you might have to do sometimes is I've had to do this is uh, stop the share and then uh -huh. start it again and reset yep. the screen. Yeah. Thank you. I think I got it. It took okay. me a sec. <laughs> okay. Okay. Great. We had some questions. You said we could do that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Hey, asked, are there points? And what are the cost of a loan? Perfect. Yep. We're going to walk through that here in just a second. We'll walk okay. you through that. Uh -huh. uh, PFS, is the process started in the same way as refinancing or remortgaging? And what's the application process? Yeah, great question. It's actually the same. Uh, we can close it under 30 days um, and or faster. And so you begin with an application we actually go the extra step because we never want to put you in something that you're not comfortable with. So Jody is going to walk through the simulator with you on your personal numbers um, and see if it's a win um, or not. We gather the same documentation, pay stubs, W-2s, tax returns, um, and then we order an appraisal. And we, um, after all is in and approved, we then move to closing. Um, this is a line of credit. So I do think there's a three-day right of rescission yep. um, so on that, that. And it is not required on an investment property. No, no, just on your primary or second home, you would have that three-day right of rescission for a refinance. Mm -hmm. One other question is, uh, so all loan types need 20 to 25% down? I think I heard the minimum was 20. Yeah, so actually your primary is only 10% down mm -hmm. depending upon uh, the loan limit or excuse me, the, the loan size that you're looking at. Um, and then we find that many people don't want to deal with the mortgage insurance, so they'll move to a 20% scenario. A lot of people are coming in because they are the self-employed and because they are somebody that um, possibly has a larger sum to put down, uh, that 30 40%. Uh, Jody is talking them through doing the 20% uh, to get around the mortgage insurance and taking that extra money um, and putting that as a principal reduction so they have access to that equity later in life if something comes up. Remember, you and I didn't know that COVID was going to appear. Uh, many people over... Um, I mean, we were able to be successful after a, a little bit. The market shifted in a in a positive manner, but so many people lost their jobs and so many people had concerns and some issues. Think about that. This loan does not require deposits in it if there's equity there. So we want to always set you and your buyers up for true success for a rainy day, for a disability issue, for a loss of job concern. Um, that is just another perk of this because again, you don't have to, you're not required to change your lifestyle. If you have equity, your, your interest calculation just sweeps every single month. And that is why so many people reached back out to us over COVID and were so grateful to have this loan uh, because they were able to survive where other people were scrounging to try to find uh, different avenues of income and or because they didn't have a job, couldn't get a second mortgage. 
uh, to be able to um, get access to their, their equity. Uh, so there are options with 10% uh, down. Again, your investment uh, loans are going to be your 25% down, which is the norm. Mm -hmm. um, and is this a good tool for financing investment properties? Yes, all day. If you think about it, short Nashville is known for its short-term uh, rentals. You might have that in your areas as well, even long-term. If you think about every deposit that comes in, lowers that principal uh, balance, right? Which only saves you more um, in the long run. And you have access to that. So again, you have um, to have to pay the, the cleaner for that particular rental, or you have to pay the taxes for that particular rental. All of that gets swept right back out um, at the time that makes sense. Now, you and I are smart business guys and gals. We're not going to charge. We're going to hold our money as low as we can and pay off our debt at the last minute, right? We're not going to be We'll be we'll be as late as we can to that dance uh, without having any uh, late payments, right? And so uh, you'll notice that a lot of people hold, 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 and then pay everything off, um, and then play that game continuously so they can save as much money on their interest uh, calculation. And I'll show you guys that here um, throughout this this calculation. But here's just kind of the math. Here's the science behind it, and it's just real simple math. Um, so in this scenario. We owe uh, 350, but you can borrow up to 80% of your total value on your home. So you may have a $640,000 line of credit amount, but you only owe 350. You're only going to pay on that 350. You just now have access to that additional equity in your home for you to use and re-leverage to purchase other investment properties, pay off debt, put your kid through college, or just have it available, right? So this is, but we're going to be looking at what the balance is, not necessarily what your line of credit is going to be for, okay? So repeating deposits. Now keep in mind, this is, we are looking at, um, this is the money coming in. We're going to call it a deposit because this is technically your checking account. This is that sweep account that's going to move all that money over to the HELOC every night at midnight. So when we think about this number, think about what your collective net household income is. This is all sources, wife, husband, spouse, partners, you name it, okay? So in the scenario that I just ran earlier with some clients, we're just gonna use them as the example because I have their numbers fresh in my brain. Um, but their gross, their net income, excuse me, was 7,500 a month. Oh, there that go. back in there. 7,500 a month. Now they, this is monthly. So I'm gonna put in here monthly. And they also had $110,000 sitting in two savings accounts. Why? We're not really sure. Um, I kind of asked them what that money was yielding them, and they said nothing. So I said, well, it's going to be advantageous then for you to take that $110,000 and apply it to your home equity line of credit to drop that principal balance so you can pay less interest on that money. So in our scenario, we put a one-time deposit of $110,000 because we knew that money was sitting around, not doing anything for them. We're going to let that money work for them and have them just move it over to this, to this account now going forward. Okay. Now these clients are really, really good. They have a great budget. Um, uh, yeah. They have a great budget. They don't live outside their means. Um, they're kind of getting ready to get this mortgage paid off as quickly as possible so they can re-leverage it and go purchase some investment properties that are gonna be uh, short-term rentals. That's gonna bring them even more income. So we didn't even include that in our scenario. We're just looking at what they've got. Um, their taxes and insurance on their house was, I think it was 385. Don't quote me on that, but we're gonna put that there. The number that always auto-populates, please know if you guys are running through this scenario, you guys can always change that. So you wanna know what your taxes and insurance are because we wanna include that. We don't escrow. So you guys are going to be paying those at some point every year when they're due. But for the purposes of your expenses, we're going to assume that you guys are paying those out and those are sitting in some in an escrow account, um, interest bearing for somebody else to get money off of. Yours is actually going to be sitting on this line of credit, but because it is a monthly expense, we're going to include it here. Okay. Then we see our other monthly expenses. Now, this is where your budget comes in. And you can do one of two things. You can either itemize them out if you want, or um, you can, let's see, or you can use a percentage, depending on what you know, what your monthly expenses are. Um, in their scenario, we went with a percentage because I kind of was already working with them on that. And their other monthly expenses were about 25, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna round it up. We're gonna go 2,800. 
So I might have to play with this just so I can get the number down to that. So we got, I need to start, huh? oh, oh, what am I doing? My apologies, guys, we're learning here. That's okay. Okay. So their other monthly expenses were about 25 to 2,800 a month. So that's where we get this. They've got an extra $2,600 a month sitting on that line of credit in addition to that one tenant they just pulled over, okay? Now they went really conservative because the wife is a realtor. She was really concerned that her income wasn't going to match last year. So I said, well, let's do this. Let's use the minimum. So we're only using 3,000 a month for her income even though she made about 175 last year. So a lot of variables can change these numbers, but we wanted a conservative approach to this strategy for them. So this is what we're looking at, okay? I'm gonna do two things here. I'm gonna click on this, calculate results. So you can see the numbers real quick. Based on their scenario, $7,500 going in, $2,800 going out, which by the way, did not include their mortgage payment because that's already being taken into consideration here. So we don't wanna include the mortgage payment in our monthly expenses. Take that out. So they were going to pay off their mortgage if they did this in 6.2 years. And that is assuming, if I click on the rates and adjustments, that they are on a one month adjustable and their start rate was 8.46. Mm -hmm. And we'll break that down here <clears throat> so you mm -hmm. can understand that a little bit more. So this is why, because we've got their interest rate over here at 3.75 is what their traditional mortgage would have been. And then they've got their effective APR on this HELOC is now at 1.2%. So when we go back to why this is better sometimes to refinance out of a three and three quarters of a point mortgage is because of this right here. This is the true cost that they would be paying on that money in the 6.2 years is 1.22%, not 3.75. That's simple interest. That's huge for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we look at, and I think it might be this one. Yes. So when we look at our principal, and this is the one I don't really like. Let me go back to return to summary because I want them to see. Yeah, it might be this one. So as you can see, the traditional mortgage versus the all-in-one, this is how much you're applying to principal, and this is how much you're applying to principal. Now, granted, we do we are taking it into consideration they made that 110 big, huge lump sum payment, but now they're paying off, now their minimum payment is based off of this number over here not the 350. And they have access to that equity at all times. I think the hardest thing yes. for me to, to, and you might be someone similar, is I like to hold on to my cash because um, the world is going to come to an end tomorrow. This is what I always think because I'm in the mortgage business and we've been blessed for it to continue to do so well. But um, understand that after I moved over that mind shift, I have access to my money at all times. Um, and I will share my partner now has used this process to snowball one and leverage it and buy another and snowball uh, one and leverage it and buy another. And now he's 17 properties in all free and clear with the um, with utilizing this particular uh, concept, again, saving hundreds of thousands of dollars versus just paying your, your regular mortgage payment um, and, and focusing on interest before principal. Now, could you show the scenario if she didn't have the extra 100,000? Yeah. Let's look at that. Um, because again, that extra 100,000 could have been used for income purposes. Um, she could also um, put it down or not put it down. Um, again, this is a situation where we wanna create as much comfort for that individual. Again, if holding that money is something that makes us sleep better at night, we want to do that. But again, uh, we want our money to work for it. And look at that by, by making that small shift. Uh, it went from six years to 10 years, but it definitely didn't get us to 30, right? So I um, want to break that into more detail there. Yeah. And keep in mind, this is in 10 years, if they kept that 120,000 somewhere else, they would have uh, a line of credit paid in full, but it's not going to be for the 350. It's the $640,000. That's the, that's what they borrowed. That's what they were able to qualify for. 
So now they have a $640,000 line of credit that they can re-leverage and purchase cash for a property and then put a HELOC on it later if they wanted to, or if it's a short-term rental, take 25% down, go purchase the investment property with the all-in-one and let that thing just pay for itself. Um, I had a great, great story. I had a client of mine who I put a first lien HELOC on. Two years later, they had enough equity built up um, to take have a down payment to purchase an investment property in East Tennessee that was going to be a short-term rental. Um, and they closed on it in July. They had their first uh, renters come in uh, September, and then they were booked solid throughout the rest of the year. After all expenses, everything else, they netted $55,000 just in four months off that Airbnb. Mm. They were then able to take that $50,000 and pay themselves back the 50, the 50 grand that they borrowed for the down payment. So now their first uh, primary mortgage is back where it needed to be, hadn't lost any time. So they were still on, on uh, their progress was still being made to pay that mortgage off in the time that they had it set aside. All the while, now all that income from the Airbnb was going to go towards the investment HELOC that they had put on it because they purchased that property with a first lien HELOC. And that now that we know how much they're going to be making off that property, obviously, because they've had it for a solid year, um, they're going to pay off that mortgage in three and a half years, Huge. utilizing utilizing this strategy on that investment property. Then they will have that investment property paid off free and clear in three and a half years. Then they're going to shift that money to their primary mortgage and pay that thing off in about another three and a half years. So in seven years, this couple who just put their first daughter into college, they have two more that have to go, are going to be mortgage-free in seven years. Or they even thought, well, can we use this money to pay for our daughter's college? Absolutely, that's what it's there for. You have access to this equity. And so now, collectively, they will have um, a line of credit between two homes of over a million dollars that they can access and utilize and re-leverage to do this again and again and again, or pay for their kids to go to college or whatever the case may be. You know, cash is cash is king. You and I both know that and having access to our money at all times now um, is, is huge. Guidelines do change on a regular basis. When the market shifted over these last um, eight months, I noticed our local banks here, what they were doing, they were no longer doing. So to know that I have access to my money um, and I don't have to worry about you telling me that you're gonna approve me or not, I don't have to worry about when the market dipped down and possibly we weren't closing as many. I still have access to that A, to live, to, to uh, provide for my family um, and or to think uh, really creatively and take advantage of when the market is possibly not shining bright for others, but shining bright for real estate agents. They know that if someone is selling a property in the winter, they're really wanting to sell that property. Uh, so that's probably uh, more of a, a perk there. A buddy of mine who's a broker um, here, he is uh, just turned 70 um, and he's lived through many different markets. And one of those markets many, many years ago, sadly, um, forced him to have to foreclose. He had so many rental properties um, and things were not uh, positioned in the right way. Now he wanted to think two steps ahead. So when the market did dip back down, he had access to money to be able to purchase new, uh, to leverage himself uh, towards a, a brighter retirement. And so he was able to sell refi, purchase, all do all the things on the all-in-one. And he has now access to a million dollars of money, whether he wanted to sell a home or not, he has that to be able to position himself to purchase uh, future investment properties in different states um, and also his retirement home now in, in Florida. If you think about, if we look at all the people that are having to work um, over a certain age now because the retirement is just still, we're not positioning ourselves in our younger years for a brighter future. Um, later, uh, we're thinking about it just too late in the game. This loan is making a difference in setting many of us up uh, for, for an opportunity not to be continuing to pay on that 30-year fixed uh, mortgage. So um, this is, is changing lives and saving money and, and making, a, making a difference. And I have uh, this loan. She has this loan. My partner has this loan. Uh, many, many people have uh, this loan. And <clears throat> there's a reason uh, for that. Now, is it for every household? No. 
Um, do you have a first time home buyer that um, is grateful for the opportunity to do an FHA with three and a half percent down? Absolutely. Um, but again, that I was that buyer many, many years ago when I bought my first home. Um, and now I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to leverage my money and let it work for me uh, for my future benefits. And so uh, this is making a difference for, for many. Is there some other questions we can that we can help answer here? Yeah, Melanie, I, I think I got a buyer that is uh I got a buyer that's looking to make an offer uh, with the house on cash. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> like, uh, what is my uh, way of convincing them to do this type of uh, loan instead of ma making the cash offer? Yeah. Do we allow for a delayed? Can they do a delayed? Yes. Yeah. Is it up to six months? Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to double check uh, before I shared. So. Sometimes cash is king, so you're not having to worry about a mortgage when it comes to negotiations and or closing fast, right? So we, um, multiple different lenders have created programs that are called delayed financing opportunities, where then I can attach within the first six months alone and get you back your cash. And so in that scenario, um, he could uh, put a line of credit on, I think he has to have at least, he has to pull at least $100,000 mm -hmm. um, out uh, to have that true line. But again, he could have the line up to um, the loan to value available for him if he qualifies. So he would then have that money there for future purchases later if you want, if you found him another amazing investment property um, and or he wanted to, you know, buy multiples at uh, one time, he could do that. Um, so, no, yes. This is, this is a buyer that's buying it for a homestead, not non homestead, homestead. Primary? Yes. Yeah. So they could do that. Um, they may be a family that um, just wants to, to be free and clear and, and go ahead and pay it off. But again, um, it's always a good thing to have access to money if they don't have any other set aside. And so having that line of credit attached to it is, is a win uh, for, for the rainy day. Um, there's nothing requiring them, but this is a huge um, help when it comes to um, we just talk about the COVID story. None of us knew that was going to happen. None of us knew that overnight we were all we were going to be shut down. We were supposed to be shut down for two weeks, right? And so a lot of things um, shifted there, <clears throat> excuse me, and the folks that were um, working that part-time job just to continue to have a little extra money lost that, you know, job. Uh, so having access to their money is was a win during that that time frame. And I don't want that to ever repeat, but we le learned our lesson that setting ourselves up for success uh, for future what ifs um, is is a win, and it doesn't cost them that much money um, initially to be able to have the line put in place. I do want to add one thing on that for the first year, however, on this loan. So those people who um, can pay cash for a house um, or own the property outright and don't have a lien on it at all, and they want to have access to the equity and they don't want to draw the money right away. For the first year, though, we do require that there is a balance on the HELOC no longer or um for no longer than 30 days so you can pay it off halfway through the month but use it for something so that way it carries a balance over into the next month um there's just a penalty that comes with that if we don't have continual balance on it but it's just for the first year so if you think about it you could put a thousand dollars on it and only carry an interest payment based on that thousand dollars month over month for the first 12 months. If they wanted to pay cash for the house and not have the, the mortgage on it, just carry something for the first 12 months and then they can pay that thing off and, and have it free and clear for, for the next 30 years if they wanted. They're given a debit card. So again, you can go to Starbucks, swipe it. You can go to gr the grocery store, swipe it. You can use it um, on your gas Um as well. So you have access to just like you and I have a debit card. There'd be actually no reason to have a, your own personal checking account. Again, you can still have that. The other thing too, is you can decide how much money you want. If you're a control freak like me, and you know that you want certain monies to go over here and certain monies to go over there. And you, I, I want to do this, but I don't know if I want to give you all, even though it's still access to your, all your funds. Like we have one toe in, not the full foot. Um, that was me initially um, because, you know, this is too good to be true situation. Right. And so I didn't hundred percent believe it. Um, you can talk with Jody instead of saying, Hey, instead of my deposits being 7,500, I really want to have 
that to be 4,500, right? And you can have your other deposits go somewhere else. You're not required to have all funds. You know, we would uh, guide and educate you that makes sense to do that because all you're doing is just paying less in interest but it, that is up up to you. Um, and you'll find that, you know, someone to end a checking account that they've had for 22 years and or maybe longer for the folks that are with us tonight, um, it that may be overwhelming. So you just will start to shift or you could do like what Jody did was start to combine all of her bills into that one reward card, right? Um, instead of paying multiple bills here, you paid everything on one credit card. Uh, for all your other bills. And then with your all-in-one, you um, have that debited out um, once a month off of that line. And that's where it was a win for you there. So question. a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to address the one with the credit report. Will it bring your score down? That is a great question. And when you guys are out, if you are out shopping this around or talking to other people about this program or other banks, very, very important question to ask is how do you report to the bureaus? Because what I have found, and I I found a particular bank would report it as a revolving line of credit. So these folks had about 80% of that line of credit utilized and it tanked their score. We do not do that. It is protected under a mortgage. Um, it's reported as a mortgage, excuse me, subcategorized as a home equity line of credit, revolving line of credit. So it's protected under the mortgage uh, title. So it's not going to hit you like a revolving line of credit would. Um, so it, your your score is going to be protected in that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, the FDIC, yes, the checking account is exactly the same mm -hmm. that you and I normally have. Uh, it's so insured. there's it's insured. Um, when is the equity available to draw on? Um, so I think standard time right now from the time you close the loan to the time the loan is set up and active is about six weeks. So if you need access to the money right away or even within that six week time frame, I just strongly suggest go ahead and take a draw. Take a draw at closing, cash that part out so it can land in your bank account. Business as usual until you get that welcome letter from um, our investor saying, hey, congratulations, your account is set up. Here's your debit card. Here's your online access, the whole nine yards. So similar to uh, with real estate, you know, you might not have a closing every single month. Um, and so you have zero um, income coming in and then you have a $25,000, you know, uh, credit um, or $100,000, you know, credit. And so that this loan is perfect for those folks that um, have their, their income kind of sways, but it's always in a positive uh, manner that allows for that extra uh, money at the end of the year just to kind of be sitting sitting there. Some people say, well, can I make more money putting it into a savings account? I know what I make on my savings, um, and it's definitely not enough to offset the savings that I would make on the interest uh, that I'm currently paying um, every month. Um, if I can, I'd like to just share how I've utilized it personally um, and kind of why um, leaving your money on that account or leaving your money in that account is so important. So I do utilize a rewards credit card and I use it for literally everything. I have a limit on there that just, it works within my budget. It covers all my bills, except for, I will say my water and my gas because they don't want a credit card <laughs> put on there. They want an actual account number and routing number. So I've had to use the HELOC for those two things only. And then the rest of it goes on my rewards credit card. So I see my balance tick up four times a month and that's it. Well, when you're looking at that average daily interest calculation, those four times that that balance goes up doesn't have doesn't weigh much on the amount of interest I'm gonna pay over the full 30 days, doesn't at all. So then I take the money from the HELOC um, about, it's about a week and a half, I think right before the end of my billing cycle on the credit card, cause I'm cheap and I don't wanna pay double interest. I'd, I'd rather not. I will take the money from the HELOC and pay off that debit or that that rewards credit card in full. All my money sits on the HELOC, allows that it drives that principal balance down and allows me to pay less interest over the life of my loan. And I keep repeating that process month over month over month. And it works and it's so simple and it's just easy for me to follow, easy for me to use. And now my money is being used to this fullest potential rather than sitting in a checking account or savings doing nothing for me. Which is wonderful. <clears throat> Somebody asked here about a fixed income. This is great for fixed income for those that already have access to um, 
maybe money to put down initially. If their fixed income is um, break even with their debts and they have no extra breathing room there, there's no extra money to move the needle uh, for them. And so there's some folks on fixed income that yes, this is a win. Um, many of you may be familiar with reverse mortgages. There's some folks that um, are in a position where they're able to use this kind of like a reverse mortgage, um, where they're just kind of dabbling into their equity um, because they have so much initially. Um, and so it just depends upon each uh, client scenario when it comes to that. But um, we've helped folks with fixed income. We've helped folks with no income because all their money is just, um, you know, assets. Uh, we've helped folks with uh, short-term and long-term rents. Um, and so there's multiple different uh, scenarios there. Um, how can folks uh, get in touch with us? We'd love to give you that inf that information. Uh, CMG Financial has been around for um, since the 80s. Again, this all-in-one product as um, was created 2005. Um, I opened my branch here with CMG 10 years ago. Um, I'm, we're the number one mortgage team within the entire company of CMG Financial. Uh, for family served and so always honored for you to work with the best of the best um, and that is uh, who we are and so yes there is a main website that's going to take you down a path um, with multiples and or call centers um, and you and I know what call center folks um, are all about so we want to put you in the right direction here and so we're going to give you an email address if you'd like to learn more about it um, you can email us there um, and I'll put that in the 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 chat. I think I'm doing this right. Yep, you are. Okay. Morg so it's my mortgage team at cmgfi.com. We can send you some great videos that Ben Stein has done for us. Uh, we have some other um, videos that are just simplified. So if uh, we uh, were a little complicated in how to kind of share, um, it'll break it down um, in terms that maybe are a little bit easier for you. We'll also send you um, the simulator if you wanted to plug in your numbers and just play around with it to say, hey, if I had this much income and my debts were blank, you know, how quickly could I pay uh, my loan off? And so this loan is a variable uh, loan. However, you do have options to have it fixed for three years, three years and or five years, okay? And so many people right now over the last eight months have chosen to do the fixed three-year option because they just want to navigate through today's uh, marketplace. Um, and so somebody was asking about the cost of the loan. The closing cost of this loan when doing a purchase is very similar uh, with, with a regular type of loan. You're going to have all of the uh, same costs associated minus your escrows. And a lot of the closing costs or a large chunk of that is going to be your escrow. Again, um, you would pay your taxes uh, do and um, make sure they're paid by the end of the year so you can take the tax deduction off of that and then your insurance would just be paid um, on a regular basis um, there as well. Um, but do you want to share, um, somebody asked about points and different things. So there oh, is yeah. there is a margin and we can kind of break that down. For yeah. You. So the way that the interest rate is comprised is very similar to your home equity line of credit in the second lien position, which is typically tied to prime rate, right? And then you've got your plus whatever or minus whatever. Well, that whatever part is the margin and that's set by the bank based on your credit profile, loan to value, loan amount, credit score, et cetera. Well, what they do is they take that index. In that case, it's prime. We use the one year CMT index. So if you guys wanna look that up and see the history of it, it stands for constant maturity treasury. It will adjust every six months. Uh, well, that when you look at it, it does, but the the, the index for this loan will adjust every single month if you're not in that fixed um, uh, term. Um, and then they take the margin and they add it to your index. So you can buy your margin down, that's paying points. You can go from the standard is three and a half. That's our basically our par margin. Um, and then we'll go all the way down to 3%. Um, so you can buy that down if you guys wanna start out at a much lower interest rate, you more, most certainly can. But you will also find that when we run it through the simulator, when we go, okay, your rate can be 6.99 versus 7.7, .7, you guys will find that there the difference really isn't much at all. So in that sense, it might make more sense for you to take that money that you would pay the margin down and put it towards the HELOC as a principal reduction payment. Yeah, remember that this is not based, this is not a, a loan that we're focused on interest rate. <clears throat> we see on the internet, what are rates doing? What's the rate? 
the rate, the rate. Remember, we're talking about effective rate. Yeah. So for me, I don't even look at it. Mm -hmm. the, me, my, my concern of this loan is not about the rate and or the margin shifting. It's about me focusing on what I do for a living um, and being able to have those deposits come in and have my money work for um, for for me. Um, and so it, that is the way to, again, leverage our time to be able to focus on saving more um, and being able to do more by um, gaining wealth, by purchasing even more real estate uh, down the road. So it's a hard shift. But as soon as you can make that mind shift um, with understanding that we're not talking about rate anymore, we're not talking about, um, you know, this is better than that. Um, it is a huge difference. I was with another real estate agent the other day and he's like, well, I've got 2.875 or three and a quarter. I can't remember what it was. And that just sounds so good. And we looked at the amortization chart um, and hi, love. Look at her, pretty mm -hmm. girl. Um, amortization chart. And um, we looked at how much interest that is. Even though it sounds pretty, that's not always um a, a cheap loan if you look at an amortization chart for the next 10 years. Yeah. So if you think about it, uh, what can you and I do with 50, $150,000? You know, we could we can definitely uh, put a down payment on something something new. I want to talk about um, the credit score, the requirements for this loan. Great, yeah. great questions. Um, our minimum credit score for an owner-occupied or a second home property is going to be 700. Investment properties are 720. Um, we have a very hard DTI requirement. It's 43, no matter what. Won't be, can't come in at 43.01. It has to be 43. Um, but you can use all different avenues to create that income. Yes. Yeah. So we can get that. We've got ways to get that down if we find that you're kind of hovering on that. There are reserve requirements. Um, so if your debt ratio is 40% or less, then we only need 10% of your loan amount. So if you're going to, apply for a $640,000 line of credit, we only need to see $64,000 in reserves. And that can come from a multitude of places, 401k, stocks, IRA, checking, savings, CDs, all of the above combined together, um, wherever that money is sitting, we can use that. What we cannot use is HELOC funds for, on another property. So if you have a $100,000 line of credit in the second lien position, on another property, we cannot use that. So keep that in mind. That money would have to be liquid, put in another account, let it sit for a couple months, then we can use that money. So we can kind of, we have a way to get you um, set up for success when it comes to getting qualified for it. Um, and then can you refi or roll over an existing HELOC into it? Yes, you may. Mm -hmm. I'm doing that right now for a client. She hates her servicer. They're horrible. They've sold it so many times that none of the features are even available anymore. And she's getting out of it right away. So we're going to put her in, put her in our all-in-one mm -hmm. and get her right back on track. And again, that HELOC that she's speaking of is a traditional line of credit focused on the prime rate, uh, which the Fed speaks of on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And so we would take her off of a traditional and move her to a non-traditional, which again is the daily interest calculation, which is which is mm -hmm. a huge win. In regard to the reserves and different things, again, you're working with two senior uh, players that uh, think outside the box. So understand you have a bar borrower that has you know, 20% down, they only need to put 10%. Well, there's the extra 10% for our reserves, right? Yeah. They take those funds after closing and put it right down on the line. So right, they're right back to where they were, but it's our job to kind of see all the things that you have laid out and us to help uh, navigate you through meeting the specific guidelines. So this can be a win uh, for you and your family. There's discussion about uh, property and trust. <clears throat> And so I think there's a way to do that in a trust. I think we've closed with the trust before. Yes, it has mm -hmm. to be a uh, revocable trust, but we can do it. We just require a copy of the trust so we can review it, make sure that it meets guidelines. Um, and can you close in an LLC? No. So what we do with the, in a situation like that is we will quit claim you out of the LLC at closing, secure it and close it in your name. And then they just quit claim it back after the first six months. Right. You would be the the, the uh, guarantee. Um, yeah. You have that. to personally guarantee the mortgage. But yes, you can put it in an LLC post-closing. Got to wait six months, but you can, uh, but we cannot close in it. Yeah. And so again, the reverse mortgage piece, um, if you know more about it, the goal is, you know, for the, nobody to have a payment. 
um, for a period of time and you're basically eating up your equity over um, and it's all calculated. Uh, it's kind of a sad loan that says, hey, you're going to die at blank age. We've done this calculation and we assume you'll you'll be gone and and uh, by this time frame. We don't do any of that on this particular loan, but if you are somebody that has a lot of money and have access to paying that down, again, you can sweep your interest um, with no concern. Um, and it again, like I said, it automatically sweeps over. So it, that makes it a win for those folks. Um, can um, hey, Carrie, on yeah. the, um, the, the, the idea about the LLC, can they also do that with a trust? In other words, get the loan on the property and a, and a revocable trust or outside the trust and then later on move it into what we call an asset protection trust? Oh, it's a great I, question. Yeah, I'd have to ask about that. Okay. That's a great question. Yeah, I haven't had that come up yet. Asset protection trust. Let's write mm -hmm. that one down. Th yeah. Those are generally... <laughs> Uh, some are revocable, but most of them are irrevocable. And that's how you yeah. the trust protect the asset protection. I have a, yeah. a, a personal question. Well, this is for everybody. Sorry. Is there a limit to how many loans a person can, can like, can I put one of these loans on each of 30 different properties and it would be a separate account, correct? And separate everything. Yeah. So you're able to have six of these types of loans. And so um, ideally the ultimate goal is, uh, for you to have one and snowball that and have another snowball it. But at, at one time, you can have six. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, guys, just a commentary. For those of you who've heard me teach years ago about how I started investing in real estate, I actually did what we're doing here with this loan. We just didn't have this loan. It was just pure self-discipline and having that, that structure to pay mm -hmm. extra under the mortgage far enough down where I could get a lot of credit on that property to go buy the next property. And do the same thing there. But the bottom line is I built a pyramid. I never sold the properties. I just leveraged them and eventually got to where I was paying them off. This is like a, a organized, structured, I, hate, I don't want to use the word automated, but all the stuff internally is done, all the calculations, everything's done for you. I mean, you know, I just, this is just amazing. You know, if you look at different things, everybody's has a different story. And in my case, my husband and I, we have a different business um, that requires more um, income to be kind of invested in that business at a certain time of the year. And mm -hmm. so just before this loan, all that money just was sitting, waiting for that time, waiting for me to, to, to pay this bill or pay that bill. If you think about it, now that money that's just been sitting there is swept over to save me all of this money, all this interest over a two, two month period, three months, we're just waiting for that time frame for then it to be swept again. And so there's a huge interest um, opportunity of, of gain there. Uh, for those folks that are are waiting uh, to pay a bill, you know, there's some of us that don't have monthly bills. We have quarterly bills, right? Um, and some of them are quite large, depending upon the type of structure that you have. And so I just have that money waiting, waiting, waiting uh, to pay that one bill uh, when it could be making me more money than what I'm paying on on the interest. So that's another big perk. Um, is there a nesting period time to HELOC after the purchase of the property? Um, I think six months. Yeah. If you're wanting to access the equity, let's say your house is appraised or the house appraised for more than what you purchased it for. And you want to tap into and just have access to that equity. We are going to consider that to be a cash out. Anytime you're accessing the equity available and you're borrowing more than what you owe, that's going to be um, considered a cash out and has a six month requirement on it. However, if you are just paying off the mortgage itself and you're not tapping into any equity and you meet the loan to value limits that are required, um, then you can do that right away. And explain the six months again, a little bit more in detail. What do you have to do for six months? Oh, you just have to, you have to own the property. You have to be on title for six months. Okay. So you cannot do this without owning it for a period yeah. of six months. Oh yeah. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, these are some great questions. Anybody else that we can help answer or trying to look here? Um, to see if we've answered um, all of them. Again, you can purchase and utilize, you can refinance this on your primary. Uh, you then can take your equity out um, and purchase the same uh, with an investment, or you could do a different type of loan. Again, I think when you get addicted and you get used to it, um, you want to have this loan uh, because you know how it's going to, to work for, for you. Um, if many of you are real estate agents um, on the call, is that true, Gary? Yeah, lot, lots of agents, some investors, but a lot of the agents are also investors. So Yeah, absolutely. Right. And so, um, you know, when you're out there trying to, again, 
uh, continue to build your business and um, share value, right? Uh, this is a great option for folks to um, be educated. There's, again, Great Depression, 30-year fix. We've always done what we've known to be done. My parents said, I did what they told me to do. Everything's just been kind of the same way. And so we're thinking outside the box. The investors that are on the call today, you're very familiar with, um, I don't, I want to use my money to make more. Why do I want to spend, you know, uh, frivolous um, interest costs if I don't have to? And so that's why this loan was uh, created. Um, and again, it takes a wise man or or uh, gal to to shift our mind a little bit, uh, think outside the box. And when we do that, um, great, great things will happen. Uh, we've been teaching these classes now over the last uh, six months. Um, and because I was really concerned with our uh, local real estate agents, and I wanted to make sure that everybody was going to, you know, stay afloat and work through the recession, because many of them had great equity in their homes. And we've been able to refinance so many people and uh, the stories that are coming um, now because they have more closings, you know, and, and uh, they're protected for that rainy day uh, makes it makes it a win. Um, please reach out to me. Craig, if you can uh, email my mortgage team at cmgfi.com, I will get you on the schedule um, and contact you so we can kind of go over your scenario a little bit more in depth, if that's okay. Yeah, and I'll take a picture of your uh, phone number there too, so we'll yeah. have that. Thanks. Well, wonderful. This was uh, great, Gary. If anybody has any any more questions, uh, we're here to help. Uh, you uh, you can search this, this loan. Now, I would ask you... Um, that there are some people that are out there that um, do what we do and then charge you a lot of money for it. And so please don't be get kind of sucked into uh, the smoke and mirrors of all that on how they're going to teach you to pay your loan off um, or how they're going to you know help you save more money. And but all you have to do is pay eight thousand dollars and I'll teach you how, you know, type of thing. Yeah. Um, Jody is here to do that all free to you. We're licensed and, originators. And they were the ones that taught me. Yeah. So I'm just giving it to you for free. Yeah, <laughs> well, we're licensed originators uh, and we follow our, our license uh, guidelines with that. And so we teach and we educate to make it a, a win for you. Um, and we wouldn't charge you for a conversation. And so Jody does sit with you. The consultation, we usually try to give about 40 minutes because you may have a lot of questions, but we're going to be on the computer with you. We're going to type in those numbers with you. Uh, we ask that your significant other or somebody else that's within your home is there so you guys can talk through and have all your questions answered at, at one time. Um, we really take this loan seriously and helping uh, many out there um, and, and, and look forward to the opportunity to, to guide you. And, and if this is a, a win for you, we're definitely here to help you serve that. Is there a, is there a maximum load amount per property? Like say I have six of these, like is there a maximum per property? Yeah, uh, it depends on the loan to value, but we will go up to three million. Per pro okay, awesome. Yeah, uh, and there's options past that. Uh, we've made exceptions past that too, if if necessary. Uh, we just closed on a three million, a little over three million on a Florida property just last month. So um, he's an investor. Actually, he sold a business. Um, I think five years ago here in Middle Tennessee, moved to. Um, middle, uh, excuse me, Florida, and um, has been able to use his money to leverage. And then he wanted to um, leverage it even more with the down market um, and take advantage of buying up more properties in yeah. preparation for a bigger gain. And so that's what he was doing with um, making sure he had access to, to those funds. What's great is you hear a lot of people saying, can I get a line of credit on my investment property? And you hear no, no, no. And there's some small banks here and there that do that. This is, this is, we're doing that. Um, right. And that makes it yeah. makes it a win for you. Uh, the calculator will definitely be available. Just take a moment and email us at my mortgage team at cmgfi.com and we'll give that to you um, and we'll walk you through that. Uh, what do you need to prepare for a call? I would just um, look at your budget, look at all the income, um, gross income that you would have deposited every month. Um, and I would think through all of your debts, what you like to um, you know, your grocery shopping, if you do the Uber Eats, if you, you know, your gas all the debts that come out, you want to be prepared. And I would, I would round that up because I would rather you be 
happily surprised uh, that your momentum is building even more um, because um, if you have a little one, they're costly. And so you got to think through all those little those things as well. If you're talking about investment, think about the cleaner, think about your management fees, think about uh, the taxes, the insurance, um, all the things that are associated. Um, but that's what I would probably gather when preparing the call. So we're really looking at true numbers um, and you're you're happy with what you, what you see there. And if you, and I will dovetail off of that real quickly. If you are investing portions of your paycheck already um, to other investments, keep that number included. We do not want you to stop doing that. This is not an eggs all in one basket type of scenario, but go ahead and let me know when we have that consultation. Hey, I am taking X amount from my paycheck and I'm putting that over here into that investment. So we can include that number in your monthly expenses and allow you to continue to do that. Yeah. I mean, this is so not a life everything. Absolutely. We don't want you to change your lifestyle. We just want to help kind of build more, more momentum off of that lifestyle. Um, and again, like we said at the beginning, um, it is for those folks that have idle income, extra income sitting in their checking account, um, and we just don't know what to do with it, except for spend it, which is great. But this is an opportunity for us to leverage it and make more um, in the future. So, um, and again, we're focused on principal before interest. That's the shift, principal before interest. Um, and that's a, a huge win there. Gary, thank you so much for, for having us um, again. And thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening. It's great to see you all. Um, thank you. Or just put in your retyped in the uh, the email address. Sure. So just to, just to be sure. So Jody, you're you'll do you like the initial consultation. Is that is that right? Yes. Now yeah. we have people on here from multiple brokerage company. I'm not sure brokerage multiple um, uh, real estate companies. Okay, and also multiple states. I think up to like I said, thirty six. Is it a, should they, they should all come through you? Like there's, uh, I just wanna make sure they're saying they don't have to go to anybody else through their state to start with you. And that is awesome. Yeah, they, they'll start with me. And if they are a state that we are not licensed in, I have direct point of contact with somebody in the state that they that they are in. And that is who I want you to work with. Cause mm -hmm. they, again, are the experts in that state um, that we just may not be licensed in. We're so the, always yeah. start here. Yeah, absolutely. The controllers here, we vet all the people. Right. So we'll put you in the right direction. So you're not with a call center. Um, but you'll find that we're we're licensed in almost all the states uh, through here. Um, and so this is Jody's main focus. This is what she talks about each and every day. And that's um, mm -hmm. she's 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 the queen of the all in one. Um, and so we're we're here to help uh, help you. So thank you again, um, Gary. And my mortgage team comes directly to us. And so don't feel yes. like you have to worry about. You can just start the conversation and you bring up the HELOC or equity line. It goes directly to to uh, Jody. So we'll set those meetings up. So what's really neat about this, I'm just, I know we got to get going here, but um, because of the investor flavor here um, and mindset, we're all taught certain ways to maximize income, minimize expenses. And one of those ways is to minimize the interest you pay on mortgages by paying, paying your mortgages off early. And we've seen other programs that, that are not really loan programs like this, like it's truly a first mortgage. Um, there are other programs, you're right, that are quite expensive and there's a lot of downside to them. This one, honestly, guys, this is probably the best presentation I've seen. I think everybody here would probably, if you guys want to give them a pat on the back or a clap or a thumbs up or a type in chat box. I mean, and, and by the way, you tr tr you're, you're true professionals. I mean, your presentation natural i mean is you guys uh, here's the cool thing about it this is the kind of thing i'm going to suggest to other people in the business because it's like um there's a famous story about volvo when volvo went in the seat belt they had a patent but they made it open patent because they thought it was so important for the human race to have that safety they didn't collect a dime of profit on it they made it available to all car manufacturers and this i think is it works for homeowners or works for investors and any this is a huge advantage if we kept it secret <laughs> but, but we're well, and the investors <clears throat> gary the investors are going to love it because when they know what the rates are on a regular yeah. fannie mae investor loan and you see um yeah. they're all smiling brightly their oh, the yeah. rights are smiling because they they know that uh they they they're gonna it's gonna be a win for them so thank you again everybody we're yeah. here to help you um and help uh navigate through so um thank you you're welcome. And thank you again for everybody that's on. If you want to stay on another 10 or so minutes, I'll stay on. If you have any Q&A about any, anything related to real estate or the, or the subject of 
uh, real estate or this subject. If I can answer, if not, I'll I'll be emailing you guys right away. <laughs> but I uh, have a question, Gary. Yes. Hi. Um, so Hi. Hey, Benetta, looks like so you've been talked to by our regular our regular clients. We would take them through you. Yeah. Say it again. Can you hear me? No, yes. no I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we would bring our regular clients through your program. Is that what you're suggesting? And yeah, we can. Mm -hmm. yep. Just like you would and for what any about past clients. You can yes, um, yes, ma'am. So you could, uh, and what state are you calling in from? Virginia. I love it. So we do a lot in Virginia. I'm licensed in Virginia already. So we've got a great AMC up there. So we can help your past clients with refinancing into this loan. We can help your new clients. Um, again, we're- I'm we're, sorry, it's stuck. It froze. it froze. That's okay. So we can help all of your clients uh, since we are licensed in Virginia, past clients, new clients. Um, again, this is one loan that we help with, but we also are um, if you're not familiar with CMG Financial, we're a direct lender, which means we follow agencies' guidelines. And so we have um, programs from A to Z, from your first time home buyer to your luxury. This is just one product and program that we're talking about today. So we'd be honored to help you uh, because we're going to talk to some of your clients that uh, we're going to realize that this is not the program for them, right? And we still want to be able to build momentum and help them. Um, and so we have multiple other products to, to assist with them as well. Are they on your website? Are any of the uh, on your? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yep, we can send that. I would love okay. for you to. We would love it for sounds. you to email us. Yeah, um, at the My Mortgage Team at cmgfi.com, and we'll send you all of that information. Um, again, corporate has a lot of um, websites that are out there. You could Google. So what you do? Google. Google. You go on the line. Um, and you uh, can search the all-in-one loan and you'll get a lot of information about that. But make sure you're going back to the professionals so you're not sucked into call centers and different things. Uh, we both have, I don't know, over 30 something years, 40, close to 40 years of the mortgage um, experience here. So we are um, gonna put you in the right direction and give okay. you guidance. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. Okay. So guys, if you wanna stay on, I'll stay on. Um, uh, Carrie Ann and Jody, you're welcome to stay too. Um, I will tell you, I'm gonna, I am mean, gonna make at least one introduction tomorrow. Um, it's a much larger group than we're part of a larger group, and uh, they do a, a Facebook lunch and learn kind of thing. We'll get you. They're also Central Time too. Are you guys Central Time or or Isha? I know right where you are is a dividing line. You know, like you know. Yeah, Central. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, you'll fit right in with these guys. They're from Texas and Oklahoma, but um, big, big group, 9,000 people. So I see some guitars in the background of someone's, someone's there. We got yeah, a in there. <laughs> I he's, love it. He's from Oregon. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I love it. West Coast. Yeah. That's Oregon on the bucket people. list. I want to go where Goonies was. Yeah. That's Oregon. on the bucket list. <laughs> Oregon <laughs> is an absolutely beautiful state. I mean, yeah. just the interior, the mountains, the rivers, the coast, unbelievable. Nothing yeah. like it. I love it. Picturesque. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Yeah. Well, thank you again, everybody. Um, okay. We look forward to helping and answering questions. And I, we're grateful for you, Gary. Thank, thank you, you so Gary. much. Oh, thank you. Much. I'm grateful for you too. So. Have a good night. Great. Right, you too. Um, hey guys, if you want, I'll stay on a few more minutes. Does anybody have any, any questions stuck on a transaction, um, stumped by a client or anybody who has something good to share? Okay. Like you had a big win in the last <laughs> week or so. How you doing, Melody? I'm great, Gary. Thank you. Good. Good to see you. How are you? Fantastic. Me too. Yep. Yeah. It's like I live. It's like I live Christmas every day now. You know. <laughs> I just kidding. awesome. Okay. I, I missed the part, the first part of the call, so I apologize. But do you have any like? like can you just do a rapid thirty second strategy of what all you would use that for? I know you were asking questions about your personal property, oh. but that loan, what, what do you yeah. see? Here, here's what I was thinking. I was, yeah, I was thinking through the mindset. And um, the reason I asked the question, if she could compare it to a reverse mortgage, guys, I personally do not like reverse mortgages. When they first came out, I thought this is bad news, you know, and so many people have been hurt by them. This is different. There's a reverse mortgage the money you pull out, it's like you're, you're, you're writing a check. It's like a checking account. 
but you don't pay anything on the monthly dues and monthly fee fees and the interest accumulates and piles onto the principal until you get to a point where you can no longer borrow unless the value of the house goes up and they reappraise it and you get more money to, to equity to pull from. But the danger is who, who normally gets reverse mortgages? Senior citizens Older who no longer have, a, a, they're not in, really? in, in past or prime years of earning. They're in usually fixed incomes. And I've, I've seen disaster strike on more than one occasion. Well, this is a little bit different. This is really for people who are in a, in a growth period, right? So let's say you're not an investor. Let's say you're just a homeowner and you're buying your second home. Um, you know, you could you could pull money out and invest it for college for your children. You can pull money out and make a down payment on a duplex for each child those are born to, to be used to accumulate um, equity and build up cash flow for when they're in college, things like that. Or if you're just straight investing, oh my gosh, I, I would use this thing. I would get the six loans, right? And then use the process of taking the excess... So what you have, Melanie, is you have a, a, a home equity line of credit and you put your, your monthly earnings in there and whatever is excess at the end of the month after you pay your normal bills, it helps, it pays down the mortgage faster. You put the excess towards the mortgage mm -hmm. principal so you build up equity faster. So I would do that, which is exactly mm -hmm. what I was doing 25 years ago when I first started. I just had to do it myself manually. I didn't have a, a process like this. I had to like, like, you force discipline and willpower and spreadsheets, do my own thing monthly and, and yearly. And that's what I did. This is way easier. You know, all that, a lot of it's just done for you. So I would use that, that equity mm. to draw against to buy the next property. Right. And I know it can only get six, but you know what? I, I'll take six. I was hoping to get one for, for every single property. I didn't look like that's going to happen, but maybe they'll change that, you know? So I think the one of the big drawdowns is, to this is the, the minimum credit score required. So this is for people that, you know, are not late, them have a good income. Yep. They manage their, their budget or they manage their income well. Yeah. I mean, because you know, you got to have a minimum of 700. So you're not going to send all of your clients there because certainly not all of your clients are going to qualify. Yeah. And that's for a prime or a second. And then for an investment, it's 720. I mean, that's yep. pretty steep. Yeah, that's what I mean. This was this was for people who are like in a growth phase. It's you're you're you understand how to play defense with your money, um, you know, offense and defense. And uh, it just goes to show you, boy, you got to keep studying and learning and stepping up to the plate and swinging the bat. Um, you know, it. I know what I know what it's like. Believe me, you know, I've, I've been up and my down up and down in my life a couple times. You know. <laughs> With different scenarios but mm -hmm. but the thing is you you come out of it and um you know you you always want to manage a, your credit score and what's really crazy about it is guys i mean there was a period where i i had zero i have actually i have almost no debt now but but like zero debt i was so much against credit cards i was in banking for 18 years so i know what happens from the inside it's it's if you and i did what banks did we'd be in federal prison you know so it's 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 usurious, and I'm sorry. I'm just I just uh, don't like that that uh, what I call nonsense debt. This is not nonsense debt. This is really good, you know, constructive, um, very usable debt. You know, but but again, it's not for everybody. It's if you're if you're a business person, um, and you can play offense and defense with your money. This is an excellent product. You know, I've never seen it before. I didn't even know this existed. You know, so. Yeah. Th thanks, Melanie, for the question. Sorry I got passionate about that, but I, my banking days. No, that's, guys, that's great information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys know credit cards, the banks, they know almost don't even care if you pay them back because they make so much money from the merchants. It, it's just insane. I mean, there's, that's why they, for years, they were just handing out credit cards like it was candy until we started cracking down on them, you know? So, in any case, um, all right, let's see. We got a couple more minutes. Any any more questions on real estate? Um, yeah, hey Trevor, I got one, Gary. If I can, please. Um, <clears throat> I really love all y'all's help and insight on this. So I have a a listing that was comped. Well, the comps are below the value. We were at one point two five million. Beautiful home, all updated. It's one of a kind in Tulsa, which is very rare because Tulsa is actually kind of a track house community, if you will. 
where they build them all out the same. <clears throat> um, anyhow, very, very highly desirable area. And it's been on for 65 days. It's one of like two houses. It is not moving. I'm getting, I've gotten two offers that were 20% below. And so tonight I heard somebody mention that desperate people want to sell their homes in the winter, which I've never heard before. And for my clients, they just want to sell it now because they bought a house to move to Philadelphia because their son's moving there. So they want to be with the family and the grandkids and everything. Um, we dropped it a little bit. So we dropped it to 1.195. And of course, now I'm getting 20% less offers on that. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, where is this 20% coming off? Like, is, is that what we feel the market correction is? 20%? Like, what? yeah, I, I think... Yeah, I do believe consumers, particularly buyers, are being more hopeful than they probably should be. But there was a pretty much across the board 10% correction that started back around July. It was after the second or third interest rate rise. Um, okay. So there was a true 10% correction. There are some parts of the country that started the rebound in December. Like it was, it was going back to multiple offers and things like that. But what the first house, what was the price on that one, Trevor? It was 1.25, Gary. Okay, so and here's the low comps too. Yeah, well, here's the challenge when you get into the the affluent market, right? Luxury homes in the affluent market. If you think, but we're just talking about money and, and being good with money. Those people are generally pretty good with their money. That's why they have that kind of a house. And people looking to buy that kind of house, you know, they're they're not going to pay retail. They're they're hoping to find somebody who needs to sell. And and by the way, I will tell you when that market slows down. Um, it has a huge ripple effect when you get to the affluent market and it starts to drop. In yeah. the last recession, there were markets where it dropped 75%, the million and above. Dropped that 75 sounds like ours. Yeah, we've been told that that market is just falling out. Yep. So that's what's happening probably more than anything, Trevor. I, uh, the only thing I can suggest is I would get that out to the team, put put it on the the, work, the workplace page. Okay. And, uh, you know, you never know when somebody's looking to move there from, you know, Chicago or Indiana or just like their person moved from, from there to Philadelphia, their person, are, they're in for a huge culture shock. <laughs> sure. You go to Philadelphia from Tulsa. But, but you might find somebody wanting to move down there from Kansas City, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, may, maybe Wichita, maybe they've been commuting, they want to move closer and get closer to Tulsa. Um, but I would get that, I would spread the word on that wide and far, put it on Facebook. Um, don't be afraid to share it with the folks here. In fact, if you want to type in like the the, the listing ID of their MLS link, sure. um, yeah, I, well, that'll be local, but I'll, I'll put on the I'll put the full uh, address on there, and okay. uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put that in the chat. But yeah. uh, and then the other thing I was catching was oh, people who usually put on Facebook tons of posts about look, I've sold this home, I just listed this one. I'm not seeing any of that. Yeah, like Facebook's down. going dead on real estate activity. Yeah. How you know, bad it, is it out there? It's it's going down, but I will tell you guys, guess what we did in December on the team? Our production went up. <laughs> what I heard you say the other night. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Great job, yeah, everybody. Closings, our closings, it wasn't like 50% or anything, but it was it was mm -hmm. noticeable because everybody else was down across the country. Um uh, there there are a few markets that had a did see it, uh, an uptick. Um but um you know, so we, you know, the bottom line is when you have a few years of rapid price increases followed by now, I think four is a four or five rate increases and there's still going to be another one, guys. I mean, remember what I, like I said back before, after the, the last one in late, was it late November, early December, remember I said it was Monday and I said, guys, watch when they say we may have to have another rate increase, they're telegraphing what they're going to do. And they, sure enough, it was by the end of that week they had another rate increase. They're already saying it again. So I, I think you're probably going to see it. I don't. I don't think it'll take till March. I think they'll probably do it sometime in February. It could be March, but make just. I'm. I feel fairly certain there's going to be another rate increase. And unfortunately, it's what's necessary to curb inflation. It's. It's you know recessions are painful for a lot of people, but not for everybody. And in most cases, the volume does drop but there's still enough volume there. So the key is to make sure you're in the game swinging the bat. So this is really important, guys. I don't care if you're on a team or not. Everybody here, whether you're on the team or in different brokerages, 
just please remember, you need to get your name out there in as many different forms as you can. And that's why I've been really pushing you to get it on, set up your Zillow account, set up homes.com, set up realtor.com, because we're going to have team. We already have the team account on Zillow. So now you're on Zillow twice, right? You do that, you multiply that, you know, Zillow, homes, realtor.com. That's now it's six times you're out there. Three times two is six, right? Um, now we also want you to get on bigger pockets. You can get on all these, you can have free accounts, bigger pockets, right? And the latest one is now um, uh, connected investors. I just broke that out to the commercial team today. We had our mastermind. I'm going to bring it up again on our team meeting in February. But everybody here, make sure you go to connectedinvestors.com and set up a free account. You need to get your name out there. And those three, and real, and by the way, RIA, right? You need to join your local RIA group. So that's three investor communities, RIA, the Connected Investors, and Bigger Pockets. Those are the three biggest ones. And then on the broker side, realtor.com, homes.com, and Zillow. Right. So just make sure you do that, guys, because it's it's not just that you'll get an occasional lead from those and you will, but it enhances your SEO. So as long as you have on your website and on your Facebook page and wherever you are, you know, keywords and key phrases like Tulsa real estate, investing in Tulsa real estate, things like that, put those in there because it's going to, when you when you have that in six and nine different places, you're going to bump up more higher on the search results. Does, does this make sense, guys? What I'm saying here? It's so easy. You can do it. And we today at a mastermind call, Betty set hers up in less than five minutes on connected investors, yeah. right? So, I, and I'm telling you this because I, I love you. And I'm telling you, I know from experience that if you do this, it's going to enhance your, your business. You, now you have to work them. You know, you got to get out there and once a week, go in for 10 minutes on each one and answer some questions and post some questions, create engagement. Okay. Um, now the cool thing is, is I did this years ago on Zillow with my brokers. I had an independent brokers. We had our, each individual agent had their own profile and the brokers had a profile. So each agent showed up twice well, on the brokers profile. Guys, we were getting leads coming in for free, we didn't pay for anything, for free daily. And all I'm saying is, dude, I'm not in production. You guys are the ones that are going to get those leads, you know? So uh, so take full advantage. And I, I know you're busy. I know it's hard. But man, if I was you, and I and I see, I can see what the market's doing, guys, I would do everything I could to get my name out there, you know? I, I wouldn't take leave any, any stone unturned and, and leave nothing to chance. Okay, and and think positive because I tell you what, you know, last time last recession, half the agents left, but the other half that stayed increased their business, mm -hmm. right? Volume only dropped twenty five percent across the board. It was luxury market was higher, of course, right? But on average, the volume only dropped twenty five percent, and yet half the agents left. That means the other half the agents, on average, increased their transaction volume by fifty percent. You know, some of them increased by two or three hundred percent, and others maybe didn't increase at all. But the average, so you just have to decide which group you want to be in. And if you if you don't swing the bat, you definitely will not get a hit, right? I can't promise you're going to get a hit every time you're going to swing the bat, but I promise you, the more times you swing the bat, the more times you're going to get on base. Okay. I know I'm getting philosophical here, but but uh, it's such an important subject, and it yeah. Hey, hey, Rob, any any insight or input you can think of? You're you're muted. Oh, you might be talking to somebody in this house. <laughs> Andre, any words of wisdom? Any any insight? Because I know you've been around for a while. Now, this is a really good call, uh, Gary, for sure. It should help a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. This is an awesome program. You know what I would do, guys? I would go to their website, allinonemortgage.com, look for some kind of PR piece or some kind of description or an online pamphlet, grab it, and send it out to your database. They have a calculator. This is Brianna. Hey, Brianna. Um, hey, so if you go to the CMG website, Carrie Ann's website, mm -hmm. there, it says products, loan products, and I've literally just... Um, 
gone to the top of the search bar and uploaded the link and sent it to people because they can they can do a calculator mm -hmm. so they can compare a traditional mortgage with that and it and um schedule a follow-up call with um her team i yeah. put that in the chat bar earlier that's an excellent idea and i and i tell you what i i I know most of you, some of you are per pretty new. And by the way, welcome to all the guests. I didn't think that I didn't, I don't think I said that early on, but for all the guests, we really appreciate you participating. And hopefully you like this and come back every week. Um, but what's interesting, some of the veterans I've known a lot longer. And I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wager that someone like, like Melanie, for example, I bet you a million dollars by the end of this week, Melanie's gonna have a message out there, her followers on this, you know. So yeah. And that's how that's how you become, you know, a top producer is doing these little things like this. Take an extra five minutes every night and just one of the do one of these things. So, okay. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, suggestions? Could you mention those uh, sites again, real quick? You had um, connected investors. Yep, connected yeah. investors, um, bigger pockets, bigger pockets. Okay. And then REIA, R E I A, is the acronym for Real Estate Investors of America. Okay. And there's usually a chapter in every town or city in the country, sometimes multiple chapters. And they often have a, a meetup. They're also connected on meetup.com. You can find them out there. Okay. In fact, if you guys, if you want to go to meetup, M-E-E-T-U-P.com, search for real estate club or community in your area within like a, you know, 20 mile radius. And you'll usually come up with at least one, if not more, and join it. Join the online version because it's usually free. And then I suggest you go in person, usually 10 bucks a month or something, you know, but, but it's worth it. You'll learn, you'll meet all the contractors, carpeting people, let pest control people, insurance, inspectors, everything you can possibly think of really the real estate. They're all there along with investors, right? So yeah, that, that would be, I would, um, I, I matter of fact, I'll make that an assignment for, for everybody. Even if you're not on the team, I'm going to make an assignment to do that, you know, so, okay, well, you guys, you've been awesome, um, next week, this is, you're going to, tonight was really awesome, but next week, um, there it is, who here has thought, or has been, they believe because I've been told that you can't assume mortgages anymore, has anybody ever heard of that, you can't really assume mortgages anymore, been told it's hard, yeah, well, you can assume mortgages more than I thought. I already knew you could assume VA mortgages and a lot of variable rate mortgages are assumable too, but there's more than that. So a guy named uh, Craig Boyle is going to come on next week and he's going to show you how you can um, uh, find and work with him to help your buyers buy a house and assume the existing mortgage. So just imagine you find a house that was bought in the last you know, 10 years. They're all going to have really good low interest rates, which makes them very desirable uh, as assumable as assumable loan purchases. So that's next Monday. That's definitely one you would invite people to. Um, I also interviewed him on the podcast, and uh, it's going to be a great subject. You know. Okay, you guys ready to go? Thanks, Gary. Well, thank all you, right. Gary. Yeah, thanks, Gary. This one was terrific. This has really been my favorite Monday night. So, oh, thank you, Trevor. Well, now, so now I just, you guys, she just raised the bar, huh? I got to, I got to, I, gotta, I gotta know. Feel, I got to fill some big shoes now, man. And I can't even, <laughs> maybe if I learn how to sing, I got to learn how to sing and then maybe I'll, I'll there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, that was terrific because we're, I mean, you know, Gary, from I think most of the agents' point of view that are on tonight, we're, we're scrambling looking for better alternatives for our clients right now. Yeah especially in the financial field. I mean, it's yeah, it's the craziest I've seen it in 10 years right now. Well, I tell you what, um, you can always look and see what's going to happen by looking at what the, the lenders are doing. And last summer, they started laying people off, you know? Oh. So also the title companies. Always talk to your title companies. Ask them, hey, how's transaction volume? You know, what are you seeing out there? And back in June, they were already saying they were down 50% year to date, you know, from the year before the title companies. And then sure enough, the lenders were following suit and you can, you can look online to find these reports starting in July is one after the other domino effect. Um, and now the tech sector is starting to lay off. 
you know, it's just the economy. I said, I will tell you, I know it sounds scary, at least it used to for me, but but don't be scared. It's just part of the, it's natural part of the cycle. And you, you, you're you going to be okay. Everybody's going to be okay. You always make it. We always do, you know, every, every one of you has been through at least one. Um, and you made it through okay. The last one was probably the worst one we've had in 80 years. We all, we're still here, right? So the key is think about what transactions are going to occur, right? And tap into that market, you know, serve them, speak to them, use the right message, the right media and talk to the right market. And we, ha we all have the tools to do it, you know? So it's one good thing about our team is over the years, thank goodness for people like Beverly and Paul behind the scenes and T.O. and Ryan and, and Aldrin and Sugar. We never see them, we never talk to them, but they're like the, 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 the framework of this team. They make stuff happen. I mean, the, the system that we have, guys, I could never do that on my own. You know, there's, there's like, like magic workers, you know, and a support. You know, you call them, you get an answer. It's just amazing. But they built here, this. Here. Yeah, isn't that right, PF? PF's known, known Beverly for years. Yes, they yes. Built, yeah, they built this platform, guys. You can find out anything you want about any person, any property. You can find out where money's moving to, moving from, where people are moving to, where people are moving from. Get demographics on any neighborhood in the entire country. All at your fingertips. Um, so it's all there. Definitely use it. And, uh, and don't be afraid to, afraid to share it. You know, show it and share it to others, especially your clients. You know, um, but that's how you win the game. It, it's just it's just like baseball. You know, think about it. In the in the pennant series, which team usually makes it all the way to the end and wins? Is it the team that always aims for the fences, swings for the fences, or is it the team that's loading the bases? In baseball, which team usually wins? Loading the bases. Loading the bases. Bases. Loading the bases, baby. Got to load the bases. And all of a sudden, magically, those home runs appear. But if you aim for the home runs all the time, you'll miss all the base hits. And it's the base hits that are going to keep food on the table. So keep swinging the bat. Take, take, your, take your hits. Get on first, get on second, get on third. And uh, you're going to find yourself, you know, and I know this sounds crazy, but I'm living proof. The last recession, our business actually increased. In fact, we grew sixfold. You know, because of that exact thing that I'm just describing to you, we we just hunkered down and went with it. You know, we didn't, I didn't try to fight it and force it. I love to sell luxury homes, believe me. But, you know, I knew where the business was and we just went right after that. Just, just, just put our heads down and charge forward. And, you um, know, the rest they say is history. So, so I hope that, let that, let that use me is, is an example. And in the, the times when I didn't do that or the times I did not succeed, you know, she just, Look at what's happening and believe what you're seeing. That's another thing is a lot of times when times are tough, some people tend to want to bury their head in the sand and, and pretend it's not there or just ignore it. You can't do that. You got to face it head on and see what you're seeing, right? And, and react to it. And you have to be decisive. This is, this is not the time to be thinking, I'll just wait and see. Mm -mm. Nope. This is the time to say, you know what? I know what I'm seeing. I've seen this movie before and I know what to do, you know? And have your one-on-ones, guys. I mean, I can tell you, there's, I'm looking here that the next week is now completely open and I got plenty of time here that's open next week. And for this week, now you got to, you have to schedule two days in advance. Um, but there's time on Friday, there's time on Thursday. And if you did not get time, um, if you need time, you just call me, text me, let me know. Okay. Try the scheduler first. If not, something doesn't work, you guys let me know. We'll work it out. Okay. Hey, Gary. Gary what do you, you want us done? You want us to have um, uh, our numbers done, our goals? Yeah. As soon as you guys can do that, I mean, I got to tell you, um, I've gotten a lot of them so far, thank goodness, but some I haven't received yet. And we want to get that nailed down. We want to get that plan set in stone. And move so we can move forward, you know. Um, absolutely share your vision, goals, actions, and plans. Um, and if there's anything you're stuck on, definitely set up a, a strategy call so we can get we can uh, get you through the process. Because that guys, that really Perfect. helps me. Yeah, I can't tell you enough how much that helps me understand where you are and where you're trying to go. So I know what marketing is going to work for you. Okay. And which market to go after. Gary, do you want us to send it before our meeting? 
I have a if meeting you, with you tomorrow. So it's yeah, just in could, it. Yeah, there's a, if you guys could as much in advance as you can, that really helps. Now, sometimes I mess up and I think, okay, I got time on this. So I'll look at it later and then I'll accidentally forget, you know. But if you get to me the day before, that actually really helps. The the ones I that I'll get them like literally right before the meeting, and I don't even know it because I'm I'm trying to get onto the meeting. Um, but a day before would that really would be awesome, guys. Okay. Hey, I got Gary? an email from the guy who writes for Bigger Pockets. What's his name? Uh, you got the beard and all that. Oh, you're talking. You're talking about um, Brandon. Brandon. Summer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a. It's a ninety day. I can't remember the name of, but it's about tracking your goals, making yeah. your goals, tracking your goals weekly and daily. And uh, he's got that for sale at Bigger Pocket. So if that's something that you might, someone might be interested in, I would check it out. It yeah. Looks pretty cool. He, well, he, he's a good guy. So he's he's a real neat guy. So yeah. So hey, Gary, before we go, yeah, um, mm -hmm. I spent some time in the world, just walking around to see what was new, mm -hmm. and I stopped by to see to talk to Success Lending to see if they're now open in Oregon, which they weren't. They are, and I spoke with a guy named Chris Myers, and he was wonderful. And I'm looking at the email that he sent me after, and they're open in a bunch of states and Virginia and Florida, and you know they're all on here, but he sent me co-branded information they're doing two one buy downs three two one buy downs and they're doing a fifteen hundred dollar credit at closing for the buyers and so they have all these cool programs uh, i'm sure that he'd be happy to talk to the group if there was anything that that um we wanted to hear from him but i mean if you get a chance go into the world or contact chris myers at success lending they've got mm -hmm. some great stuff and they'll do free co-branded um uh, materials, ma marketing materials for you. Hey, hey, Lisa, would you mind doing it just to email introduction? Um, oh, no problem. Well, you always like that better because you, you've already spoken to him or swap messages. And then um, there's a, it's like a warm handoff. And then I'll have him come speak to the class. We've got a pretty full schedule in March. I think I'm only teaching like two classes, but uh, we'll, stuff like that, we, that's high priority. So we'll get him in. You know? I love the fact that it's part of of EXP, and I'm trying to use the EXP vendors as much as possible. Yeah, I didn't realize that they, they were doing that. I, I'm, that's uh, that's a nice surprise. Yeah. Well, I just counted the states on his. And it's 29 states he's got listed here. Okay. I don't know if that's just him or it's the other the other loan officers too. But he's very experienced. I talked to him for quite a while, and I was pretty impressed. And I used to do loans, so I I was you know asking some serious questions. And I liked him. So I, I'm thinking that uh, they might have some good programs for, for certain buyers. Okay. That sounds good to me. Okay. Was there someone else that had a question a moment ago? I, I, I thought there were maybe three people. Could be wrong. Okay. Everybody okay then? Thanks, okay. Gary. See you guys. You, well, you guys were awesome. Thanks, Andre and Rob, for, for um, helping me out there. And thank you guys for participating. I really do love all the questions. And I, and please provide um, suggestions for what you want to learn. Now, on the by the way, the team meeting on the 8th of February, uh, we do have a guy from Bigger Pockets who's going to show showcase how that program works. And I want to give a pat on the back to Anna uh, Galumian because when she spoke to her rep, she actually spearheaded the effort of, of getting us a really good deal of our own volition. I wasn't even part of the discussion. <laughs> so in any case, they already volunteered to try to give us like a 10% discount. But remember, there's power in numbers. The, the more we speak as a group, the more uh, uh, benefits we're going to get from it, you know? So thank you, Anna, for doing that. Um, let's see. Um, anything else I can think of? The 8th. Um, oh, we wanted to also talk about on the team meeting of the 8th, um do a working session for getting you on trello so we're going to do that okay it'll be a, a common a combo meeting and uh by the way if you if you have noticed gina is out she's got the flu if you guys want to send her some love you know get well soon that kind of thing um i know she'd appreciate it so yeah will we get a new link for the uh meeting on wednesday i've got it on my calendar but i don't see a zoom link if you if you go to the GIA workplace page, if you're ever in doubt, go to the GIA workplace page and click on the more button 
and you'll see events. You drop down, you'll see events. Click on there and scroll down. You'll see the all the meetings. But look at the, um, so the last team meeting we had was, when was that? was um, the 11th. So look for a meeting, email um, Trevor on the 12th of January. Beverly would have sent out with a recap of the night before the January team meeting. And then we'll have the, the link for the upcoming class. And if you register for one, you're already registered for a whole bunch of them. And you'll get an email reminder like the day before or something, you know? Thanks. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I had mentioned this before. I felt a little overwhelmed with all the links and the calendars and the Zooms. So what I've done is I've taken one Chrome browser window and put all my team oh. meetings there. So I only have that. So our website, our tools, our trainings, uh, workspaces in there, anything I need just for our team. So I could really, really focus because... Man, yeah. real estate is a rabbit hole after a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, and I'll, and I'll say this again. I've, it's been a while since I've said it. Just because we show you a lot doesn't mean you have to do all of it. Always remember, you know, three things, guys. You know, three three marketing campaigns, three efforts at a time. If you go beyond that, it becomes really difficult to track and measure everything, you know. So, you know, a minimum one marketing campaign, I really think you should have, have three. But do it, start with one, and when it's up and running, then add the second one. When that's up and running, then add the third one, because you do have to measure and track everything. If, if, you don't, if you don't know your numbers, it's hard to know what adjustments to make. Does that make sense? You got to know your numbers. And I used to be the worst at that. And I know how to do it, too. I just didn't. I was like, I'm making so much money. I don't, I don't have time for that kind of stuff. But boy, let me tell you, uh, when times change, okay? or a marketing campaign stops working and you're not on top of it and you don't know that, you'll keep spending money and it's just throwing money down the toilet. That's one of the reasons why you track it. No marketing campaign ever lasts forever. It, do it doesn't. It ebbs and flows. You got you to know when that's happening and make adjustments. That's why you track your numbers. So I tell you what, we have some great tracking documents. We haven't brought them out in a while. How about if, uh, Beverly, when you, when you get this, if you can send... Uh, the, the one tracking chart that, uh, well, Beverly, if you have any questions, let me know. It's the one we got from Louis Reset. It allows you to track everything from the initial outbound postcard, email, Facebook message, whatever, all the way to the closing and every step of the way. How many phone calls? How many emails? How many meetings? How many showings? How many offers? And then finally get to the closing. So you know exactly what it takes to get one more closing. OK, then you add that extra number of phone calls and emails and postcards and so forth. And lo and behold, you got one more closing and you keep doing that. Then you'll know when you need to hire a virtual assistant because you'll be overwhelmed. Right. So it all comes back to tracking. So so we're going to give you that chart again. I think it's um, I think it's on the website under the coaching information. Um, if it's not, we'll make we'll make sure it's there. But I, I would definitely get that habit, you know, so. Okay. Okay, guys. Good night. Hey, you guys have an awesome, awesome rest of the week. God bless you and your families. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on the one-on-ones. Um, if you need anything and you can't get a one-on-one -on -one set up, just call me, text me, or email me. Okay? All right. Thanks, Gary. All right. Good night, Good night. everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.